Uh, the other one, uh, related to Russia and Ukraine, uh, actually, I guess by proxy is related. But um, have you kept up at all with um, the Belarusian opposition that's been happening in that country, neighboring Russia and Ukraine, um, and any of the events that have been happening there? And I guess I ask because uh, it's very subtle, or I guess it's kind of been a slow buildup recently because it gets overshadowed, obviously, by the actual war going on in Ukraine. But um, I've noticed news reports about uh, about clandestine sabotage, about um, groups basically that helped to assist in preventing um, Russian logistics and supplies easily making it um, across the border from Belarus to Ukraine during the in attempted invasion of Kyiv a few weeks ago. And the slowly rising popularity of Svetlana Sinoskaya, uh, who is the leader basically of the Belarusian government in exile, which I believe is headquartered in either Canada or the US, I can't recall which. Um, so basically, I guess I just wanted to ask if you were at all familiar with her or her work. Um, she's been, no, I think, nominated for two Nobel Prizes in the past. Uh, oh, wow. Twice for it in the past. Um, and yeah, she's just kind of uh, celebrated as the... What's non, her name? Uh, Svetlana Sikanoskaya. Mm. Uh, and it, she she's she's not in Belarus? No, she's been in exile for the last she was originally. She was an opposition uh an opposition political figure there along with her husband. Her husband currently is in prison um for being a political opponent to the regime because the Lukashenko, the president there, has been in charge for almost three decades now. Um so 30 years of rule under a brutal dictator. Uh, and so but basically the, and what's interesting is she and her husband were one of the most recent generations, the most recent um, incarnations of this opposition, but the government in exile that they represent, or I suppose they, they work with, is one that's been around for a long time, the Rada of the Belarusian Democratic Republic, uh, they've, it's been around for more than a hundred years now. It's the oldest government in exile operating since 1919. Wow. So yeah. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, it's very interesting and it's just kind of been something that I've been keeping my eye on because, you know, everyone is paying attention to and has their eyes on Russia, Ukraine, the effect on the U S and the EU, but then the fate of Belarus and also the fate of Ukraine, depending on how Belarus operates militarily and politically during this whole fiasco. Really? Is really. that if it has that much of an impact? I mean, yeah. it could potentially because Belarus, if Belarus were to destabilize, then that would be something that Russia would have to take care of if they wanted to keep their man in power there. So that would pull mm -hmm. Russia into a conflict in Belarus. Uh, realistically, they'd probably be able to, you know, contain any protests or any kind of rebellion there. But, um, but yeah, it's it's complicated, which is more the reason why it's been so quiet. More a focus on damaging logistics and sabotage rather than giving. So the wait, these an excuse to are, we have opposition groups in Belarus that are sabotaging. Russian attacks on Ukraine is that my your is that what you're saying from what I would have to go back and find the article but yes from what I recall I was uh I was reading about um this network this decentralized network in Belarus that had been working against the Russians and the Belarusians oh, the the Belarusian military and government um I don't know uh, what their current status is because, hmm. um, you know, they're decentralized. They operate um, kind of like anonymous, basically, but an IRL version of anonymous. Um, hmm. But yeah, basically, uh, 
whether Belarus, and the other thing is this, it's kind of this cat and mouse game because if Belarus starts throwing its own soldiers in and things don't go well and they lose a lot of soldiers um, sending their men to fight in Ukraine, then that could further destabilize and create a critical, a critical po political uh, situation in the country. And that could become a situation where Russia is forced to fully occupy and perhaps even annex or replace the Belarusian military, um, which people don't want there. But at the same time, um, if they don't do something or if sabotage is as big of an issue as has been implied by some of the reports I've seen, then, um, you know, there's the risk of Russia no longer seeing them as an ally or the risk of um, the risk of appearing weak in front of Putin, which is fatal for for a lot of people, uh, I'm sure, if you've seen in the news, the headlines of oligarchs being poisoned or being found mysteriously dead. So it's it's yeah. very fascinating if you have an interest in international yeah espionage and intrigue yeah. that's a that sounds like a documentary waiting to be made yeah um i just um i mean based on what you're saying i just i hope it becomes as much of a hassle or barrier for russian forces as possible like whatever could cause more difficulty for russian forces yeah would be would be good so i wish them the best of luck yeah actually yeah. i did have one more question just because i know that they do have it's funny uh i actually um i actually happened to have one of their flags and someone recognized it one day when i was flying it uh who was himself from i believe saskatchewan um have you ever seen a white red white flag Anyone flying one around your parts? Oh, white, oh, I thought you were going to say white, blue, white. It's the um, same. It looks exactly the same, but with a red stripe. What was that? What does that represent? The Belarusian government in exile. Mm. That's so interesting. We have a white, blue, one, blight, white, blue, white, which is opposition, uh, Russians op opposing mm -hmm. um, the Russian regime. And now we have a white, red, white. That's pretty cool. Yeah. We could. Do you think they could work with each other? <laughs> the white, blue, white, and the white, red, white. I given that. Yeah. I think that they already are. Um, okay. But but again, I uh, I couldn't say with certainty. Hmm. But anyway, seems like a, it seems like a perfect match, no? Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I, I like both of the flag. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.